Welcome to Elk Ridge Baptist Church. Talking this morning for this Memorial Day weekend, a time to remember. And as an aside, I saw this morning, gentlemen, be kind to your wife. Because if she poisons you, your death will be put down as a COVID-related death, and there will be no autopsy. So remember that this weekend, and as long as we are in captivity, and we'll talk more about that later. A time to remember, John chapter 15, and we're going to be reading verses 9 through 14, and then commenting specifically on verse 13. John chapter 15, verses 9 through 14. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Verse 13, and this will be our text this morning. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. Let's pray. Now, Lord, pray that you take these words, these thoughts, that they would be your honor, for your honor, your glory, and your kingdom. In your name we ask these things. Amen. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friend. Monday is a Memorial Day. All across the country, people will revisit the burial sites of loved ones who have died. If not in person, they will in spirit. On Tuesday, one will be able to drive past any given cemetery and be able to notice the beautiful array of colorful flowers spread throughout the acres of headstones because the person buried there was remembered by someone who loved them. In the past, many veterans' graves would have small American flags posted, but one governor shut down a major factory just north of us. Flag Zone is based in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, and is the last American flag producer in the state of Pennsylvania. They produce five to seven million flag, stick flags every year for their customers, which include contracted counties, not just in Pennsylvania, but around the country, to place them on the graves of fallen military personnel. The best way I can describe it is that our stick flags have been held hostage by our governor. That was Dan Ziegler, the president of Flag Zone. Also this year, the Department of Veterans Affairs has prohibited public events at grave sites because of COVID-19. The Boy Scouts and other groups have been barred from carrying out the mass flag placements. I can only speak for myself, but my 90-day trial subscription to communism is about ready to expire, and I am no way interested in renewing it. But back to Memorial Day weekend. The definition of memorial, according to dictionary.com, is, quote, something designed to preserve the memory of a person or event, end quote. This morning as we gather our hearts for worship, we remember the sacrifice of the American soldier, all branches. It's because the men and women who gave their lives on the field of battle that we have the freedom to worship God as we choose and to live in this wonderful country. If not for our brave soldiers, we might be speaking Japanese, German, or even Arabic. From 1940 to 1973, the military draft assured that there would be enough soldiers to meet the requirements of the military. Many volunteered, but some were drafted. 
Anyone in the military in the last 46 years has joined willingly. And the major jump on that was shortly after September 11, 2001. My father joined the Navy and served between World War II and the Korean conflict. My purpose this morning is not to justify, excuse, or condemn our military actions around the world. My purpose is to thank those who put their lives on the line for a higher purpose. It was best said in the short phrase, all gave some and some gave all. Those that made the ultimate sacrifice we honor this Memorial Day 2020. There are three things I want to look at that the ultimate sacrifice purchased for us. And the first one, if you're keeping notes and making points, is our freedom. The first thing the deaths and sacrifices of our soldiers provided for us is freedom. It's by far one of the greatest things. In this country, we enjoy many freedoms. Our Constitution is very clear that our rights come from God. And the government was only established to protect those rights. Sadly, there are some in different agencies of the government, state, local, national, that have come to believe that the government is God and they are his, uh, the government's ambassadors. Our Bill of Rights spells out 10 things that make America unique and special. There are those that say America was never great. And to those, I say, thank goodness I'm not close to you because I'd probably be very tempted to slap you. America is unique, America is great, but it's great because of our Constitution that simply states our rights come from God. And no government can lawfully take away those rights. In our Bill of Rights, number one on that list is the freedom of religion followed by speech, press, assembly, and petition. Now, the mainstream media is very loud and protective of their, their freedom of speech, numbers two and five, and uh, speed of, freedom of speech and the press. But they downplay number one, the first one listed, the freedom of religion. And for the last several weeks, number four, the freedom of assembly. Mr. Trump made an announcement this week We'll talk about it more in a second, but many in the media reacted like their hair was on fire because the freedom of religion and assembly are something that they do not want to encourage. The president is pushing for churches to reopen, and Elk, the Elk Ridge Church Council is watching these things very closely and the developments both locally and nationally. And Lord willing, we will be back here soon. Your deacon will keep you posted. Now, some of you have seen pastors both locally and nationally. There was a local pastor on a, a national TV show at uh, 10 o'clock the other night uh, making a lot of noise. Let me just say this. Elkridge Baptist Church and Pastor Ken are not trying to make headlines or be the center of attention or controversy. Our purpose here is to glorify God and not glorify this institution or glorify this individual. Any honest reading of history will leave you no doubt why this country was founded. The Puritans did not come here to promote slavery. They came here to escape the slavery of the Anglican Church and the Roman Church. Now, they weren't physically slaves, but they were more theological slaves of the Anglican Church and the Roman Church. 
There is a reason that communist countries build walls to keep people in, while worldwide people risk life and limb to come to America. I've always wondered why Bernie and AOC and her posse don't pack their bags and move to Cuba or Venezuela if they really love that lifestyle so much. On this Memorial Day, we salute and we honor those that sacrificed so that we could be saved from tyranny. We have freedom in Christ as well. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 tells us. Just as we have freedom in our country through the military's sacrifices, we have freedom in Christ because of His sacrifice. Let's look at the context because a text without a context can be a pretext. And now I did. I pulled where the Spirit of the Lord is freedom. Let me read the section. 2 Corinthians 3, 12 through 18. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses who would put a veil over his face. Interesting. Put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. But their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the Old Covenant is read. It has not been removed, because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But when anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, is freedom. Verse 18 and we, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. As a little bit of backdrop, Moses had gone up and spent 40 days with the Lord. And when he came down, his face was glowing. He was radiant. And he wore a veil to protect the people. But as this verse talks about, there are people that have a veil on their hearts that keep them from fully seeing God's truth. And although many of us have veiled faces as we go into different stores in our community, I, for one, am looking very forward to the day when we can go about with unveiled faces. But as Christians, we, ought to, sure, we sure, ought to make sure that we don't have a veil over our hearts that keeps us from seeing God's truth and God's love for us. This Sunday, as we do every week, we recognize the freedom from sin and hell that Jesus provided through his sacrifice on Calvary's cross. You hear me say it often, how you doing better than I deserve? And the reason I'm doing better than I deserve is the Bible tells me that my sinful nature, if I got what I deserved, I would be in hell or I would be headed there. But through the gift of Jesus, his sacrifice on the cross, I do not have to suffer hell, but I can be in glory with him. The second thing is security. The first is freedom. The second that our military provided, provides for us is security. Pearl Harbor and, uh, and New York City 911 are the two times the aggressive attack of America's enemies have come to our shores. Most wars are fought overseas. I've heard that Japan said that they would never look at coming onto mainland, the mainland of the United States because there are 70 million gun owners hiding behind the trees. Uh, that number is much greater now and it's one of the reasons why our mainland has not suffered a direct attack. 
but most wars are fought overseas. I'm most reminded of this when I watch the evening news. Every night I go to bed in the safety of my own home while wars are fought on foreign soil. My autos will not be blown up. I'm not going to face bombers on the way to work. No missiles flying overhead and no IEDs in the streets. Now, to be fair, there are some dangerous cities and communities within our boundaries. And if you were involved in the drug trade, human trafficking, and stolen goods, you could have a genuine problem. But bombings and kidnaps and beheadings are not common in America. Judy asked me the other day, do you ever think you'd want to go back to Cancun? We spent a couple of uh, vacations in Cancun and, and Judy's favorite restaurant in the whole wide world is Bogarts and in the middle of Bogarts in, in the Yucatan Peninsula Cancun in the middle of Bogarts on a raised pedestal is a gleaming white grand piano and she says are you ever interested in going back to Mexico <laughs> well, when I read about the kidnappings and all of the problems I don't have even a little bit of a desire to go anywhere but America. Bombings and kidnaps and beheadings are not common in America. We have security here. Now watch what goes on in different parts of the world and you will be reminded of the safety and the security that we enjoy. Now there are some who would like to believe their security is in their bank balance and their 401k uh, those who have taken a hit, I believe they'll be back. Maybe their life insurance policy or their job or their marriage. But our only true security and lasting security is in the person of Jesus Christ. Proverbs 14, 26. Whoever fears the Lord has a secure fortress, and for their children it will be a refuge. Peace is the third one, freedom, security, and finally, peace. With liberty and security come great peace. When you tuck your kids in at night, you can thank a soldier that they sleep in peace. When you relax on your front porch with a fresh cup of coffee, thank a soldier that you don't have to worry about friendly fire. It's because our military, our soldiers have given their lives that we can enjoy the peaceful lives that we do in America. We live like no one else in the world lives. There are many other things we enjoy at the expense of the lives of our soldiers. So today we want to honor their courage, their valor, their sacrifice by simply saying thank you for what they have given to us. Now, this is Memorial Day, which is for our fallen soldiers, but whenever I see a soldier, whether it be in Home Depot or Lowe's or out on the street or at the gas pump, I always make a point to say thank you for your service. And to the person, whether it be male or female, thank you for your support. It's an honor. Just as we have freedom, security, and peace in our everyday lives and our communities, we have freedom, security, and peace in our spiritual lives. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. I'm reading it out of the message. The King James, you really got to dig into it. And read it a lot. We don't have that time this morning. So the message is a paraphrase. It kind of skips over. The author of the message wanted something that he could read to his children. So the message is not always true to the original languages. But it will give you a flavor of what the scripture uh, says. And then you can dig in deeper as you want to. But Ephesians chapter 2, 11 through 22, in the message says this, But don't take any of this for granted. 
It was only yesterday that you outsiders to God's ways had no idea of any of this. Talking about the Jew and the Gentile separation. You didn't, you didn't know the first thing about the way God works. You hadn't the faintest idea of Christ. You knew nothing of that rich history of God's covenants and promises in Israel. You hadn't a clue about what God was doing in the world at large. Now, because of Christ dying that death, shedding that blood, you who were once out of it altogether are in on everything. Verse 14, the Messiah has made things up between us so that now we're together on this, both non-Jewish outsiders and Jewish insiders. He tore down the wall that used to keep us, keep each other at a distance. He repealed the law code that had become so clogged with fine print and footnotes that it hindered more than it helped. As a side note, Moses came down with Ten Commandments and then the rabbis uh, decided to add on to it and they had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things that are in the, the Torah, the additional scriptures, rules and regulations. And we see uh, life through the life of Christ, he constantly was poking holes at the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the religious elite about those laws that they had made up. He repealed the law code that had become so clogged with fine print and footnotes that it hindered it more than it helped. And then he started over. Instead of continuing with two groups of people separated by centuries of animosity and suspicion, talking about Gentiles and Jews, he created a new kind of human being, a fresh start for everyone. Verse 16, Christ brought us together through his death on the cross. The cross got us to embrace, and that was the end of the hostility. Christ came and preached peace to you outsiders and peace to us insiders. This is written by Paul, and he was a Jew. He treated us as equals and so made us equals. Through him, we both share the same spirit and have equal access to the Father. Verse 19, that's plain enough, isn't it? You're no longer wandering exiles. This kingdom of faith is now your home country. You're no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here as much uh, with the right to the name Christian as anyone. God is building us a home. He's using us all, irrespective of how we got here, in what he is building. He used the apostles and the prophets for the foundation. Now he's using you, fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. We see it taking shape day after day, a holy temple built by God, all of us built into it, a temple in which God is quite at home. It behooves me to remind you of he who made the ultimate sacrifice on the old rugged cross to purchase three things for us. Freedom, security, and peace. We remember our, and honor our military and we serve our Savior and are grateful for our freedom, our security, and our peace. Let's pray. Now, Lord, take these words, apply them to our hearts and minds. Help us to be receptive for what you want us to learn. And, Lord, we know that you will undertake in all things that soon we can be back together in this building who is dedicated to you. In your name we ask these things. Amen. See you next week.